Hey guys, CB Super. Uh, today I'm going to go over how to do this shockwave effect. I used a couple stock video effects from the new Infinity Pack from Triune Digital. Uh, and the nice thing is that they come on this uh, on this black background, so you can easily composite it just using either a screen or some kind of additive mode. So let's go ahead and just jump in and create our own effect. The way we're going to do that is we're actually going to use the shockwave that I made. And I just made it using a fast noise. So it plays pretty fast and it just expands outward. You guys can, I'll show you how to make this and then we can, so we can just make it together here. All right, all we have is this planet and nothing else. So let's go ahead and first, let's go ahead and create our fast noise. And let's make our shockwave. This is fast noise, and I know we haven't had a whole lot of training on fast noise, but fast noise is like your go-to generator for doing a lot of different visual effects inside of DaVinci Resolve. It's the equivalent of like a, a fractal inside of After Effects, um, generate clouds inside of motion. Pretty much every compositing program, visual effects program, has some sort of fractal or some sort of uh, similar effect. So let's just bump up the detail a little bit. We might even turn up the contrast and we'll leave the scaling and all this the way it is for now. So we can quickly come over here, jump over to gradient in the uh, color tab. And instead of unidirectional, we're actually gonna do a radial. Now we're kind of already starting to see that something something's going on here. Let's bring the start of the gradient. Let's go ahead and bring that into the center. And then we can bring in the end just a little bit. So the way we are going to work on this is we're going to be looking over here on this gradient. And as you can see, we can change things about the gradient. So if I come over here, I click on the gradient, I can turn down the alpha. Well, that's going to create a hole in the center. I can also come to the end of the gradient and I can change that from white back to black and then turn up the alpha as well. Now I can click somewhere in the center, turn that to white, and we can either turn the alpha up or we can leave it down. For now, let's go ahead and leave it down. Now, you see what we've built here, if we kind of zoom in a little bit, is we've built our own shockwave, if you will, that can expand and contract. And so scale it down a bit, and then let's move this over so it's centered. And now when we expand it, it's going to be more like a, a shock wave effect than it is going to be um, kind of just moving around. And sometimes it's difficult to get to this point. So you might want to just kind of like take note of what my, um, my settings are here. I've got detail all the way up, but I mean, the detail doesn't have to be all the way up. You can turn the detail down and you can still get like a cool banded shock wave effect. Um, the, what the details is just going to give you, it's going to give you more texture and it's going to allow it to have more ability to conform to whatever the pattern should be. Um, contrast for here, contrast is going to, I mean, we could even use the contrast slider as like an explosion here. Like that could be cool. Uh, but then we would have to make this larger, which we could do. It's not a big deal. Uh, kind of just depends on what you want the end result to be and then you can use the slider as like a like it grows and uh, evolves over time and that could be kind of cool but that's it's not what I'm gonna do today might play around with that later and then brightness is just gonna you know again just change the overall look and it doesn't always change things in, in an intuitive way because it depends on what your scale is. It depends on if you have a C, they're not, uh, if it's discontinuous or inverted, like all these things are dependent on, they and will change the way that your, your, your animation looks over time, right? So what we could do is we could just start it. I actually, um, for this effect, I think I'm gonna start it I'm gonna end it at say like frame 70. And uh, because it's the C, let's go back. We'll just turn the C the rate off for now. Um, I'm gonna end it on frame 70 and I'm just gonna make this, give myself some room and I'm just gonna make this huge. 
So in order to animate this handle, this tangent handle for the gradient, you're actually going to have to come over to where it's start and end. We're only going to animate the end, so you could just click on the end and then move in to say frame 40 where we're going to start the animation and you can just drive it in. And so it left behind an animation path. We could animate that if we want. There's no need to for right here because we're just enlarging it. So now we come back in here, we'll see that we actually have this animation that just explodes outward. Okay, and that's going to be the basis for our shockwave for this animation. Uh, and so as you can see, I mean, it wasn't too difficult, right? We just went through here and really just played with the detail, contrast, brightness, scale, and seethe. We're not going to add seethe right now. All right, so now that we have our fast noise, let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like merged in. We can see it right now. So we know that we're going to need to mask out this planet. I don't, I don't know why I'm showing you guys this when it's so small. So we know we're going to have to mask out this uh, animation. So it's kind of cool. Um, it's not completely centered. So we also know we're going to want to center it just a bit more. Right away, I mean, we could go in here and we could play with the fast noise. But now that I got the fast noise the way that I want it, I'm actually just going to throw in a transform node. And I'm going to take it to like a point where it would be right outside of this uh, planet, which happens to be Earth. And now I'm just going to move this over a little bit. Now, one thing you'll notice is that when I do this, I'm now affecting the edges of this. So the transform, as I uh, as it goes outward, you'll notice that it's going to clip, right? It's going to clip all that. So one thing we're going to want to do is probably enlarge this fast noise. Just come over to the image tab here and unclick auto resolution and maybe just bump this up enough to where you know it will cover completely which that looks pretty good now we'll come back into the transform node and we'll center it and now that we've centered it we might have to even come back into the fast noise bump up the height just a little bit all right now that looks pretty good and now that does not look pretty good all right so let's all right, cool. That's exactly what we were looking for. Now we got it there. So it's transformed. It was a fast noise. Let's go ahead and add some color correction in there. Just add a quick CC node. Drive it in and let's bring it back so we can see it. And let's, I don't know, maybe add some blue. I think on most of them I've added blue. And you can play around with um, so if you don't like the white core, just come into the fast noise, double click, come into the color. And if you don't want white, you can change it to say, you know, like a shade of blue. Um, change it to uh, a hard blue. I like the white because it kind of adds like a, almost like its own glow to it. And we can even add a glow too if we want, like, in like a soft glow or something. And then obviously just, uh, Gain that down quite a bit. And we could just kind of blend it back a little, however you want. All right, so we still can see all of it through this planet. So we knew we were gonna have to put in some kind of ellipse, some kind of mask, and probably invert that. And now we can just bring it down. What I like to do is I like to bring it down pretty close. And then, uh, so I'll go right up to the planet's edge here and see how that looks. And that looks okay. Um, we could also, uh, let's move that out of the way. We could also bring it back just a hair and then give it just like a, less than a pixel of soft glow or soft edge. And that'll probably mix it a little bit better. So now that we have that, we can, um, we can work on the actual timing and speed of this. So what I may do is I may merge this out right around 50. So go ahead and blend it all the way down and go back to like 40 maybe and then blend it all the way up. And so that kind of just shuts it off automatically by frame 50. So it's not lingering up here in the corners. We could also change that up a little bit. One thing I did in the demo was I actually added some camera shake. So there are some like, uh, camera shake tools that you can use. I personally don't like them. Um, I, I like to use an actual shake modifier. 
Uh, so I'll do this. This is this is the way I do it. You can do it any way you want. I know I've shown how to do this already, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get too crazy with it. Up in the modifiers, I like to turn the smoothest all the way down and unlock these. Turn these to 0.5. just so I get a very slight amount of camera shake there. And in order to kind of mask, we can, um, so you'll see a little bit of the edges. All we have to do is come over to the edges canvas and we could just either duplicate mirror probably will work easiest. So now when we click off, you'll notice that it's actually just mirroring whatever pixels are closest to it. So in this case, it'll mirror out like this blue, it'll mirror the black, I mean, it's, for what we have here, our foreground image um, being this far into the interior, this is going to work out perfect. If we come in here, we actually have to screen this over so we can actually see our effect. All right, so that that looks weird, and that's because our ellipse. isn't quite working. Um, we are going to need a little bit more soft edge and I'm actually going to grow this slightly. That is perfect right there. All right, now we're just going to cache it out and render it out real quick and see what it looks like. God, yeah, that's cool. That looks violent. All right, so we've got that. Let's go ahead and create a new timeline real quick. And let's drop this rendered shockwave video on its own layer. And let's add some audio so it can sound as cool as it looks. Let's get rid of the inspector. Um, so if you just wanna select the audio and not have to unlink it, all you have to do is hold down the Alt button. You can select it and then just delete it. And it won't affect the video at all. So let's go to where the actual explosion starts. Right about there. And then we can just start adding some of these effects. So if you if you have your effects library, your sound library set up, like I already have mine set up, so where all I have to do is type in say I want a whoosh. Right, I just type in whoosh, and then it's going to pull up all these different whooshes. Now, I, I spend a lot of time and money uh, gathering sound effects. Um, I would recommend anybody who's making any kind of like science fiction, either passion projects or whatever, just start looking for either free or making your own sounds. And then, but it's very important to actually title them correctly. Uh, and they can usually be broken up into like different types of sounds, like risers hits, booms, whooshes. That way, when whenever you are looking for a specific type of sound effect, you, it's real easy to just, okay, I click on this alien whoosh, and then, you know, like, it's it's gonna be a whoosh. Now, that's not exactly what I want right now, but I mean, if that was what I want. So I've already kind of gone through and picked out the sounds that I want, and I brought them already in here into my media. So now all I have to do is kind of line them up where I know that this is the main hit. So I just kind of start them all off by the hits. All right, cool. That's going to be like the main hit. Now I'm going to need a lot more room because what I'm going to be doing here is I'm actually going to be layering several different sounds to get a more unique sound because these sounds as their own are, are, are cool, but the more layers you have, the more, the more complex the actual sound is going to be. So maybe I'll throw in like a gas explosion. And if you just kind of layer them up, you see how different that sounds? I mean, you know, and maybe I even want this other explosion here and I can actually just reverse it. So I can come in here and I can change the clip speed and just reverse it. Leave the pitch the way that it is. Now it's going to reverse it and then I can kind of like bring it up so that it's going to hit from the other side, but it's going to lead up to the hit. You 
know. And then um, and you can cl you can clip this so that it's not you know interfering with the actual sound itself. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, you get the you get the gist of this. It's basically just um, layering all these effects so that we can get a really interesting audio sound design. I just downloaded actually on Black Friday. I just got Triune Digital Sci-Fi uh, sound design, and I love it. Um, and it just gives me it just adding. You know, anytime you see a good deal, just add to your library of effects. You know, whether it be sound effects, visual effects you know, whatever. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, take this shockwave that I made. I'm going to put it on a black background and I'll throw it up on my other channel. If you guys want to go, you can go download it or you can just download it in the link below. And uh, if you guys want to follow along, you can use this in your own projects or, you know, do whatever you want with it or just use it as inspiration to create your own shockwaves, which is what I hope you do. All right. So that's pretty much it for me. Um, if you guys have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.